Hello, welcome to the Recognitive channel when we are about learning and relearning. This is a personal project that is sponsored by my free time. Let's talk about the telescoping effect. In this video, we will define the telescoping effect, present a few explanation of why it occurs, and then some examples. The name of this bias is after the telescope. When you can see a white dot on the black sky, as you're looking at it from the telescope, it appears that space is warping. This warping or deformation effect is what we will refer to as telescoping, but in this bias it will be applied to the time dimension. The telescoping effect is about time placement of events. When you have a time frame and a time window and several events around such time window, when you are asked about events that are closer to now, they tend to be dated in an earlier date, as if they happened before than they actually did. When you consider events in the distant past, they tend to be in a later date, as if they happened after they actually did. This is called reverse telescoping and forward telescoping. I was having a conversation with a colleague that is a new hire, coming directly from the university and somehow the movie Catch Me If You Can came into the conversation. He said, oh that old movie. I said, it isn't old, it's from 2010. But the reality is that the movie is from 2002. So this is an example of forward telescoping. Let's talk about some explanations for the telescoping effect. There are two very distinct domains to explore time illusions, short time span in the realm of seconds and minutes and long time span, where you're talking about months and years. As of long time span, you can mainly see that these studies deal with autobiographical memories, the memories of your own life, and public life events dating, such as the arrival of the Halley Comet, a World Cup, an election, some tragedy of some sort. With a wealth of research, scientists have been able to group issues of forward and backward telescoping to a mix of processes of storage, how the memories are stored, and retrieval, how they are accessed on the memory when the data is required. Let's understand the different models of events time storage. The time tagging model says that every event has a timestamp in memory. The degree of precision of the timestamp can vary, as for instance you very well know the date and time where a child was born. There is little evidence to this model. The sequential or conveyor belt model states that all events are stored in sequence. Telescoping occurs when events are forgotten. The inference model states that each event is stored with circumstantial information that allows the dating to be determined. This is one of the strongest models, as verbal protocols during studies support it. The reminding model establishes that each event is connected sequentially to one event that it is related to. You end up having a multiple grid of interconnected events. In this model, a concept of trace strength is created. The recency of an event is determined by the strength of the memory trace. Like this. Like the trace strength model, the accessibility model states that the recency of the event is estimated based on how much can be remembered about the event. This way, more memorable events would be dated more recently. Like this. Let's understand the different models of events time retrieval. Demand effects is about the intent of pleasing oneself or the interviewing. The subject will try to increase the count by moving the event state. Of course, this only works as long as the type of event is good or desirable. Again, heuristics is about practicality, energy efficiency, about substituting the original question with an easier one to answer. When a boundary is given, the subject will naturally move events towards the time frame. Rounding will make this worse. This is probably the most robust model. The further the events into the past, the lower the probability of recall, and the further the events in the past, the higher the error of dating. In this model, these two phenomena are combined. When the subject cannot use any other strategy, they will recur to guessing. While guessing, putting the events in the center will minimize absolute error. If the event cannot be recalled, then the start of the boundary might be used as a substitute. If the event were more recent, I would remember it. As always, with social sciences, there is not an accepted way that this bias is explained. Rather, it is agreed that many of these models or effects are working together, acting as one. 
What impact does a telescoping effect have on our lives? I struggled in this bias to find a serious implication. Because honestly, who cares if we do not date things properly? We're not historians, but the reality is that the workings of this bias affects you in another way. In the book Why Life Speeds Up As You Get Older, Raisma points out that the three mechanisms that have been identified and linked to the acceleration of the passing of years are telescopy, reminiscence, and physiological clocks. How to fight telescoping in this presentation? You must fight routine, so create as many distinct memories as you can. And I'm not talking about years here. Think about weeks. This way, years might appear more distinct than they actually were and help you fight part of telescopy. Taking pictures helps with the memory, but how many pictures in your phone would make it into a printed photo album with its related cost and everything? Not that many, right? Take pictures with purpose. And yes, make a printed photo album. Another impact is frequency estimation. When we're asked to provide frequency counts of a certain event, we are drafting a time frame and then trying to date events and locate them versus that time frame. After that, they would be counted. Telescoping would make you overestimate the frequency counts. This is what happens to me when I estimate the number of times that I go to a coffee shop. Don't rely on your memory where frequency is important. For important things, keep a daily log of your activity. Let's evaluate the video. I didn't address brother and sister biases, but that is just because this bias does not have any. I gave a few examples, but for me this is not cutting it yet, so I get a 4 on this one. And now we turn to our roulette for the topic of the next video. And the winner is... Self-serving bias. See you in the next episode. This is the Recognitive channel. Thank you for watching.